at a Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kia Gave. You're just joining us. You are watching a business. I am. Let's get talking. This is your official sector trends this morning. Now, Global, one of the world's leading multi category delivery platforms, recently announced the expansion of its operations in Africa to include Ghana and Tunisia bringing its current operations to a total of seven countries on the continent. Today, we look at uh, this focus on Africa and its economic growth globally. And joining us uh, this morning, we are delighted to announce Priscilla Muhiu, who's the General Manager, Global Kenya. Ms. Muhiu, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you today? Fantastic. We are glad to have you around, judging by your background, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's get, to, let's get talking then this morning about Global. First of all, can you talk to us about this expansion plan that you are announcing? What is behind this? And could you say that this has been necessitated by the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic has now moved us into that spot where we say companies like Glovo have to be part and parcel of everyday life now, whether we like it or not? We all know that Africa has a lot of potential. Yes. Um, as, you, as you know as well, um, the population is much younger. The economic growth is, is improving in most of the countries. So yes, uh, we see a lot of potential in Africa. And uh, it, just to quantify the amount of money we have invested so far in Africa, even we have invested about 30 million uh, euros so far. And we plan to continue investing and we will invest more than 60 million uh, euros to just continue uh, expanding our operations in Africa. All right. This expansion, is it informed by the way in which you've already performed so far in the markets that you are currently present in Africa? Sorry, uh, the markets that are... Yes. Can, can you get me, Ms. Mohir? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. All right. Could we also say that this latest expansion is also informed by the performance of the markets that you're already currently in in Africa? Yes. Yes. Could you talk uh, we to launched, us about that performance? Uh, Kenya. Yes. We launched Kenya in 2019 and we have been very impressed by the growth in the market. Uh, later on, a few months, uh, we launched Cote d'Ivoire. And these two markets have really given us confidence in the potential of Africa. So um, currently, we are market leaders in those markets. And in, within a short time, we were able to come in and answer to the consumer need. So currently, Global is able to get anything delivered to the customer, not just food, but uh, we also focus on other categories such as groceries, um, beauty, pharmacy, etc. That value proposition really, really um, compelled the consumer to start using Global. So we have seen a lot of growth in these two markets, and that's what has incentivized incentivized us to focus on the market of uh, this is Africa. Pretty much. Then the question comes in then, um, why Ghana and Tunisia? What is very specific or similar in, in these two countries in the markets that you already in in Africa? So before we launch a market, we have to look at a couple of things. The yes. first thing we look at is the smart mo smartphone penetration. Given that we are an application, we have to make sure that the people can be able to use uh, the internet in those countries. So as you know, um, in Ghana, currently the urbanization is about 50%, and it, the internet penetration is much higher even compared to Kenya. So this has uh, incentivized us to go into the market, and actually so far what uh, we are seeing this market becoming even much bigger than Kenya. It's interesting that you're mentioning that, and I'm going to ask you this question. It's a direct one as well. They're saying that in Kenya, what is very special really is mobile penetration. But then you're mentioning something very important there, that despite that mobile penetration, what has to be also spoken about, when, especially when we're talking about companies like Glovo, is internet penetration. Could you talk to us about that? Do you think that internet penetration overrides mobile penetration when it comes to the penetration of the services of global? Yes. So 
the application, you, we ha definitely have to use the internet. Yes. So if you look at the, inter right now in Kenya, we have about more than 30 million being able to access the internet. So that presents us an opportunity to grow much bigger than we are even in Kenya. If you look at Ghana, same thing. Internet penetration is super high. But however, um, we also acknowledge the fact that people, some people may not be able to access internet i yes. have think about a proposition that appeals yeah to, that appeals to people and uh that's what we are currently thinking about how do we crack the mass market do we reach the people who are not able to access the internet yes. are we able to combine both offline and online solutions so that's something we know we, are, we acknowledge that we have to think about if we want to really expand and crack the market so something that we've seen about global as well when we when you actually launched in the Kenyan market, you were viewed as just a delivery company. But then as time went into, and I'm talking about 2020 and late 2019, we actually started seeing global make partnerships with companies, hotels and all that. So you're not essentially just a delivery company, you become a services company. Can you talk to us about that? Do we expect to see majority of those um, partnerships again continue and is that the strategy that you're taking into this new market that you're going into so global is a three-sided marketplace yes. so we have on the platform we have riders we have the stores and we have the customer so ideally what we do we connect the three of them so you are a customer you you want to buy from a particular store you go to the application you find the store you're looking for place your order and then we send that order to the rider who now goes and collects the item from the store and brings brings it to you yes. so we are a three-sided marketplace and uh we don't we, we most of the like, like all the stores you see they are already existing we are just now facilitating or giving them access to consumers who are interested in having their goods delivered at home yes fantastic yes so we got into the COVID 19 pandemic and then the importance of a company that global then was elevated. Everybody's talking about 2021. Have we had a shift where we're saying, again, we're going back to why we used to be all indeed going by your penetration in the market and the numbers that you probably would be able to tell us this morning for the first six months of 2021. Would you say that? That sort of online movement, that sort of business model that we accepted under the digital economy is here to stay. I, I can attest that it's here to stay. Um, when we when COVID hit last year, we yes. definitely see a, saw a spike in, num in, the, in the growth in terms of orders, especially in groceries category. However, right now we are even higher than what we were before, like uh, when COVID hit. So it tells you are getting to, to, run, uh, to, to convenience people are getting getting things delivered to them so you can imagine a situation where uh, are so used to getting this. so when you think about going to the shopping mall paying parking um queuing to just get some grocery delivered like the whole the time you take and the effort it takes versus having something delivered to you for about a hundred shillings consumers are now begun beginning to adopt and and, and have this culture of convenience ingrained in their into their habits yes so this is there to stay if anything i think it will grow so let's talk about that it's an open space now it's a digital economy there are the players in that space as well and now since yes. that's the new mode we got to talk about cost vis-a-vis -vis convenience what are majority of online clients going for because cost has to be now a factor and how are you able then to address that specific area for cost vis-a-vis -vis the convenience that you're promising your clients so we have two ways of doing this the first thing is that we manage the distance for example if you go to global right now uh you are not able to see stores that are more than four kilometers away from you yes this enables us to manage our cost because we pay the riders based on cost and then the other thing do uh, is to do what we call bundling where an order a, a rider can take multiple uh orders going to the same direction so that means as opposed to having a rider go to the store pick it up deliver to customer one and go back to the store and pick it up and deliver to customer two we are now able to bundle that order so the rider leaves the store with two orders and then delivers uh the toast to the, the, the items to the two customers so bundling as well as reducing the distances or making sure that the distances make sense for us in terms of profitability those are some of the ways we are able to reduce cost the other thing um 
we are doing uh, at the moment uh, to make sure we also optimize cost is to have uh, different kinds of vehicles. So you can have motorbikes, you can have walkers if the distance is more, less than 300 meters. Yes. And we also we have uh, people who cycle. So this is enabling us also to manage. So yes, uh, last mile distance in Kenya is expensive, but I believe there's an opportunity to innovate around that and continue to bring the cost much lower. Pretty much. I would like to talk about something um, um, that uh, you're promising as well. You're calling it the micro fulfillment center. Could you could you expound on that this morning? Is that anybody who wants to learn about some of the service bouquets that you offer sort of gets to know what the micro fulfillment center is? So uh, we recently launched the micro fulfillment center actually in July. June this year, sorry, not July, June yes. this year. Yes. And the reason why we decided to do that is because we wanted to give the customer a different value proposition. Yes. So it, it, the, the global, the micro fulfillment store on the app is called Global Express. And the reason why it's Express is we like to be able to deliver to goods to customer within 20 minutes. Now with the current stores, full neighbors if we are not able to do that because there's a lot of uh, operational things that we really need to work on and we don't have a hundred percent control but in this case we this is our our store we are able to give the customer um you know a different value proposition of 20 minutes and you will also notice that the the, the skus or the items on the store are limited to the convenient items yes. so we are um right now uh, promising consumers to get things delivered in 15 minutes. If you have an emergency, you need milk, you need bread. If right now, we are able to fulfill using the Global, set, the, the Global Express stop on the app. Pretty much. All right, let's talk about where we are as a continent, especially when it comes to digital economy. Would you say now that we are catching up or we are right where we need to be with the rest of the world? Uh, I think we've barely scratched the surface. Mm. Yeah, yes. yeah, we, we, we have a long way to go and the opportunity is much, much bigger. There are many things to be done. And the good thing is that now there are many players coming into the market and we're educating the market and we're getting more and more people using the, the, the internet to do commerce. Yes. Uh, I see a lot of potential also in what we call social commerce where people, actually it's already happening. Uh, people buy things through Facebook, you know, Instagram, etc. So I see... a this market becoming much, much bigger. I see an opportunity, even as global, to even facilitate uh, this. What the, the, the social media sellers like? How can we help them get their de uh, goods delivered to the customer? So the potential is big. We have barely scratched the surface, and I think we are where the US was maybe ten years ago, and this market will boom. So when you look at some of the penetration trends or at the adoption trends in the country. Could you quickly mention which ones those are that stand out, especially here in Kenya, which you think that if it's the same same one that's going to happen in Ghana and Tunisia, then indeed that adoption level is also going to match what you've already seen in the country. Uh, the first one is groceries. Uh, yes. Actually, groceries uh, surprised us in Kenya because uh, Kenya has the highest penetration of groceries in the glo whole of global, you know, the global markets. So we were able to be craft groceries by working with partners, by figuring out how to, you know, uh, use a micro fulfillment center to deliver goods in, in record time. So I think that the one thing that could also take Ghana to the next level is, um, you know, improving on the groceries value proposition. I think there's a big opportunity there. Yes. Right. So would you say, indeed, that what is probably sort of not, I would say, elevating Kenya to the level that it needs to be, especially when we're talking about digital economy, is internet penetration? What is not... What is, what is the biggest I'm doing to, for Kenya not achieving the levels of um, digital economy needs to get to? Could it be just internet penetration? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think trust is the biggest thing, is it uh, in my view. Just come up with trust. 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 That, has to yes. be a, that has to be a cultural issue. Yes. So how do you get to and manage? How do you get to manage that, Priscilla, from, from <laughs> a management point of view? <laughs> okay, so, um, and, and that's the reason why we keep advertising, we, t we keep building trust, and I think 
for in my view trust is super important and yes. as e-commerce players we have to make sure that we are consistently delivering what we promise the customer yes uh, so uh, this this the problem the problem with trust comes in when the customer does not get what they expect ah, I so see now. it's in, very important as all of the e-commerce players we try as much as possible to build that trust within the consumers so that we can make this market much much more vi uh, vibrant it, it, um i yes. can give you an example of myself i i took time before i started using any e-commerce <laughs> platform uh, and this is simply because I was so scared if I get this item when it comes to me it's not what I actually saw yes so um, I think if we are able to crack trust where we are continuously delivering the customer value, uh, the customer promise. If we are continuously, if there's an issue, we are able to respond to the issue. We are able to address the customer issues. I think that if we are able to do this at all e-commerce players, we will be able to crack this market, make it actually much more vibrant. Interesting that you should mention that. Uh, as, as that's that's an interesting story. All right, then this is another question. I know you've intimated to it this morning. But then when you're talking about mobile penetration in the country, place, Priscilla, somebody's going to tell you, well, depending on how you're looking at it, in Kenya, you could be talking about even more than 100% in that mobile penetration level. So are we going to see a global that is not run by the app, probably on a USSD? How far are we from that? Um, for Global, I, I, had, I don't foresee us launching a product that is USS, USSD based, yes. but I see an opportunity for us to combine both offline and online solutions. Yes. So, for example, we could have like an agent uh, model where it's agent plus uh, um, app, app uh, model, but to be honest, I don't see us uh, going the USSD way. And this is simply because um, the user experience on a USSD is not the same as an application. Yes. And it makes it difficult to get products listed on a USSD. It makes it difficult for you to place an order. Uh, the user experience is great. So I see us doing a, combined, a combination of offline and online, but not USSD. But not USSD. Fine. Let's yeah. clear like yeah. this, Dana. When are we coming back so you could tell us exactly how the Ghana and the Tunisia market is responding? What, what period do we give it before we talk about it? What? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Did I get your question? Yes. Did I get your question? You asked me when do we come back, right? Yeah, and talk and about, talk about the Ghana and Tunisia, Tunisia market. Yes. Okay, one year. Let's come back, and, and I know it will be a different story altogether. Fantastic. Priscilla, thank you very much for taking your time to speak to us here at Metropole Television. Thank you very much for having me. In conversation with Priscilla Muhil, who's the general manager, Global Kenya, talking about the digital economy and their new venture. They're going into Ghana and Tunisia. Guess what? She said, one year, we come back and talk to you about whether to Ghana and Tunisia are adopting it better than the country. We take a short break. Once we come back, your economic review, top on that, 30, around 38 of NSC listed companies are trading below the levels that they were trading back in March before we announced the first case of the coronavirus pandemic. But then if you look at the investor world at the Bose, it's already increased 600 billion. Why this disparity? And is the coronavirus pandemic still a factor in a 2021? Once we come back here on a business app.